What is the probability that someone draws a four of a kind hand when drawing five cards from a deck of 52 cards? So example 58.5 in the notes actually has a video devoted to this question. So you can watch that video for more detail on this subject. But since I assume you watched that video and you're still having a little bit of difficulty, I'm going to talk about just how to form the sort of numerator of the probability fraction. So we had a probability fraction and the denominator was simply 52 choose 5. Uh, this part is pretty straightforward. The denominator comes from the idea that this is a classic combination. How many, the denominator of this fraction was how many five card hands could you choose from a deck of 52 cards? Think about that. That's a classic subset, right? You're drawing five cards from a larger set of 52 cards. Classic subset drawn from a larger set scenario. And the order doesn't matter. For example, if I were to draw, say, the four aces and the two of diamonds, that's exactly the same as saying I'm going to draw the two of diamonds and four aces, right? The order in which you say that hand doesn't matter. If you say I have, you know, the ace of clubs, the ace of hearts, the two of diamonds, you know, the ace of spades, the ace of clubs, that's still the same five card hand in a game of poker or whatever that would be considered the same five cards. It doesn't matter the order. So order doesn't matter. Subset from a larger set, that's certainly the denominator. As far as the numerator goes, let me describe it in terms of fundamental counting rule and see if it makes more sense to you. If you're going to use the fundamental counting rule, you would say what? You'd say, well, there's two steps to build this hand, right? I have to do two things, right? If you think about it, what are the two steps that I have to do? I have to say, well, choose which card will be repeated four times, right? Choose which card is repeated four times. So which card will be repeated? For example, in my mind right now, I'm thinking, let's repeat the seven four times. If I have to choose that card, well, how many choices did I have for that? How many cards, you know, different types of cards are there to choose that card from? Well, if you think about it, there are 13 different choices in a deck of cards, right? You can choose the aces, the kings, the queens, the jacks, right? Or any of the digit cards from two to nine. That adds up to 13 different types of cards. So I have 13 choices for that card that's going to be repeated four times. Okay, so now I have in my mind I'm going to have four sevens in my hand. But to finish the hand, I have to have a fifth card. So let's just say here, this face will represent, you know, my choice of choosing the other card, right? The other card. So there's going to be one more card left over. So how do I, how many choices do I have for choosing that last card or the other card? Well, think about it. If I took out the four sevens from the deck, I would only have 48 remaining cards, right? And so it would, the answer to the problem would then become 13 times 48, because there are 13 ways to complete the first step, times 48 ways to complete the second step, and voila, I have my solution, right? Now, that is correct. However, when the problems become more difficult, sometimes you're unable to use fundamental counting rule. You must use combinations in that case. So what I tried to show you in the video is just how you use combinations as an alternative. We can do the same thing. We can just say, look, you know, there are 13 different types of cards in the deck. I need to choose one of them in order to pick the card that's going to be repeated four times. This is exactly the same as that. 13 choose one just turns out to be 13. And of course, I can do the same thing here. I can say, well, look, you know, there are 48 cards in the deck. 48 cards that will be left over that I haven't taken, right? So I took the sevens out. There's 48 cards that are untouched. I'm going to choose just one of those cards in order to complete my hand. So again, this is the same as 48 above. And you also saw in the video I talked about 4 choose 4. Where is that coming from? Well, it's just the idea that I said, hey, you know, you could actually, if you really want to break it down into great detail, you could say, well, look, you know, you had, you know, 13 cards to choose from. You choose the one card that you're going to take, the one type of card. So you're going to take sevens, for example. But you still have to physically grab the sevens to put them into your hand, right? So what I said there was, I said, well, hey, look, there are four sevens. You need to choose all four of those sevens to put into your hand. So you're not going to leave some of them out. You're going to take all four of them. But this calculation really is just the same as the number one, right? So that calculation just ends up to be the number one. So if it just turns out to be one, it's not needed in the calculation. I could throw it in the middle here. I could say 13 times 1 times 48, but it would still be the same as 13 times 48. 
So in the end, this is all you need to do for your numerator. You can just do 13 times 48.